there's been a debate. People say that, you know what, these highways that can wirelessly charge your EV, these roads that can do that, there's no point. They don't charge fast enough. Um, it doesn't make sense. However, a lot of these skeptics didn't realize that um, actually this wireless charging technology can charge faster than almost every EV available on the roads currently in the United States. Yeah, some of the newer ones can charge at this speed, but not many. So wireless charging turns out to be much faster than what all the naysayers said it would be. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Guys, there is a wireless charging highway in road charging. Um, this is the first in the world with these speeds, but this technology is going to roll out in, I believe, probably numerous cities around the world. When I say numerous cities, I mean that not in the way you might think. So I'll explain what I mean by this. Anyhow, there's a 1.5 kilometer stretch of road, so it's about one mile long, and you can charge it up to 300 kilowatt charging speeds on this road. Last week, four lightly modified battery electric vehicles, a semi-truck, a box van, a passenger car, and a bus, drove across a mile-long stretch of France's A10 outside of Paris in a real-world test of a new wireless charging system's performance. Now, first of all, I should mention, there are now wireless charging roads in about 10 different countries around the world. Not large stretches, but generally the idea is to put them in places where there are bottlenecks, where traffic just sits there for a lot of the day. That makes sense, right? Anyway, the result in France was the new wireless charging tech is, which is co-developed by Electrion and Wireless and Vinci Group, can transfer more than 300 kilowatt of power, right? More than 300 kilowatt, which is crazy. So that's nearly as fast as some of the fastest Tesla superchargers you can get now, which can charge at around 350 kilowatt. Uh, but this is without wires. Remarkable. I don't think anyone thought this would happen. I, per I personally am shocked about it. Electrion says that by, by deploying high-speed in-road wireless charging in strategic locations around a transit bus fleet's route in Tel Aviv, Israel, the pilot project proved they were able to reduce the size of the bus batteries from 400 kilowatt hours to 45. I'm just going to repeat that. They were able to reduce the size of the bus batteries from 400 kilowatt hours to 45 a 90% reduction in battery size, of course, weight, material. I mean, imagine how much more efficient that bus would be. You know how much that would weigh? I mean, having an additional 355 kilowatt hours of batteries, that's going to weigh literally a couple of tons, that, much, that many batteries. So what does this mean for the future of wireless charging? Well, a lot. I mean, yeah, it's not going to be something where we're going to be using this everywhere at least for the next five or 10 years. Yes, DC fast charging will be the main method of charging vehicles. But in the future, I can see this rolling out in dense areas where there's a lot of traffic. Yeah, places where you might see, I don't know, half, half a million cars a day. And a lot of them might be sitting there driving slowly along roads. Now, imagine when we have you know, 90% of all the cars on the roads, even 100% are all electric, which will eventually happen. Then these kind of wireless charging roads would make sense. And being able to charge at speeds today of 300 kilowatt plus 300 kilowatt, imagine what we can charge it in 10 or 15 years. It might be 500 kilowatt by then. So initially, everyone said wireless charging roads didn't make sense. And they might've been right at the time, but I think with technological advancements, that is going to change. That'll mean the batteries in many of the vehicles that are driven in cities particularly could be much smaller than what they are today. So this is awesome. I'm stoked to hear this. I think that um, plugging in your EV, it's not a big deal, but I certainly would prefer not to have to. And I think that's what's going to happen eventually. What do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Also, my solar and batteries. I've got a 50 kilowatt hour battery here and I've got a big solar array. So I pay zero dollars for electricity that's including charging my electric car 
Resync Solar is the company that I used. I'll put a link to them in the description below. Many people still believe that you should not bother buying an electric car with fast charging. And I've heard this and seen this written thousands and thousands of times. They say, there is no need to buy an E with 300 kilowatt charging, 400, 500, 600, 1000 kilowatt. It's a waste of money. There's no charges to charge at that speed anyway. And whatever there are, there's so few of them, why bother? Well, Tesla begs to differ, so does China. In fact, I know of several Chinese companies planning on rolling out super fast chargers in Europe and in Australia and many other countries around the world. And when I say super fast, I'm talking 500 kilowatt chargers in line with Tesla's. Now, there was actually a story uh, today about Tesla's new chargers, their superchargers, which will enable actually 1.2 megawatt charging and make 500 kilowatt chargers ubiquitous around the world, says Tesla. I actually do think that the rollout of these super fast chargers will be quicker than what people estimate. And that in the future, it will be quite normal to charge your car at 500 kilowatt, not just in China. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500, I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. Great to have you with us. If you haven't already signed up to our newsletter, um, make sure you do so. I'll put a link in the description because truthfully, most of you are not going to see our videos if you don't. They're just being hidden on YouTube for whatever reason. But if you get the newsletter, then you just you get options. You, you can look at the newsletter and say, well, that's the videos today. I don't want to watch those. And tomorrow you can see the videos and say, oh, well, I want to watch one of those. That's interesting. It just lets you know what's actually happening. So what is actually happening here? Well, there's an interesting post here, which was from Tesla's charging director called Max. Now, Max shared um, in this post on X, he said, first V4 cabinet supercharger. It's first the first 500 kilowatt charger for Tesla's, 0 0.5 megawatts, three times power density, two stalls per cabinet, high throughput, higher efficiency, lower cost, faster deployments. And even though this sounds boring to some people, here are the key phrases, guys. Higher throughput, higher efficiency, lower cost, and faster deployments. When Tesla installs superchargers, 